class summary. You can read that online. Um, <clears throat> kind of the first slide here is what matters when you're converting from red rags fabrication parts, um, the type, size, routing. It doesn't matter is if it's a T or if it's a top. It doesn't matter if it's a you know uh, carbon steel or PVC. Uh, what connection type it is. So I put that up there because it's really easy for um, and or your your tradesmen to get kind of bogged down by what's in the Revit model if it's a family. If you just draw a generic content, four inch round is a four inch round. When you convert it to the fabrication uh, database and the service, that's when um, you've already figured out what's going to be in the project and you can convert it into that. Um, things that are going to get skipped are your inline equipment, things like valves, fire dampers, um, you know, end of line equipment. So your end of line equipment, mostly there's not a supported pattern for that. Uh, they want us to use uh, private families for those things. Okay. Your inline is going to get skipped. Um, and the reason why it's going to get skipped is because if you replace this valve, what do you want to put in its place, right? So you have to, we have to actually uh, tell the software what to put in the place of a particular valve or a particular damper, okay? Um, and the way Autodesk has outlined this for us, um, they haven't really given us a, a mapping file. Uh, <clears throat> what they've done is they want us to take the family uh, name and they want us to take the family type, okay, and put them together in a format such as this, okay, um, separated by an underscore. So <clears throat> you'll have to have the exact name of the family, the exact description of the type. And when, in terms of families, uh, type can be anything. Um, because we're talking about pipe fitting, um, usually it's a size, but a type can be literally... C CFM. Yeah, it can be all kinds of different <coughs> And the name of the family is can be anything too. Um, you notice how there's an inch mark um, in the type, and there's the inch word in the family name. Um, so there's no standardizing there. So what they want us to do is they want us to take the name of the family and the type, okay, and put that in the uh, button codes of the service, okay, and then use the button code of the valve to connect the two. So we're saying in the case of butterfly valve, space, dash, space, two space, well, you know, that's the name of the family. We want you to put in this ball valve, okay? Um, so if you don't do any mapping, when you do a convert, you're gonna get the Revit family just gonna stay there, okay? And you can just delete that family and manually place a valve. That's the workflow you wanna do. With some mapping, okay, it'll just intelligently Swap out that valve. All right. So, what are the problems? You need a button code for each side. Type using the model. So, if a particular project is using five different sizes of that valve, you need a button code for each one. In that service that you're trying to convert to. What if you're using lookup tables to drive your size of the valve rather than a specific type? Right, we're getting it. Um, family name is not predictable, so again, where you download this family from, not every butterfly valve is named the same. So uh, there's no predictability <coughs> here, kind of what I'm getting to. It requires a regular editing and button mapping in every relevant service. So if you have project-specific services, 
Um, you're going to have to get into the revenue model, maybe build a schedule, figure out what valves are in this project, and then you have to go back to the application database uh, and manually build a set of button codes in that service in order to make this workflow work. <clears throat> Possible solutions. Uh, swap in inline equipment with a node family that has only one type. Okay, so that's answering his question. If there's only one type, uh, maybe we can reduce the number of button codes needed in order to make this possible. Okay, um, and that'll standardize your button codes. All right, but it still requires a um, the exact family name. And the type description. What about an app? Can I put that in? Wildcard, maybe? No, I don't think it. It, it has to be exactly <laughs> that description. Ah, cool. If you miss that a, would be better. If you miss a space, um, anything, it, it'll break it. All right. So what I'm gonna um, I'm gonna jump into Revit here, okay? And I tried to build uh, an add-in or not an add-in a. Uh, uh, some slides to depict this, but it's really hard to do it without actually showing. So I'm going to sit down, and I apologize for that. All right. So what I've got is a Revit model. Um, what I've done is I've just mocked up something here, so I'm not trying to fly around in an actual project. Uh, I've thrown in some valves. Um, this here in particular, this is a globe valve, okay, uh, butterfly. Um, just to try to mimic what you would see on a project. And I'm going to convert this to fabrication. Okay. Um, all the pipe converted, skipped my, uh, skipped all my valves and my inline families. Um, so I'm going to jump back into the database here. What I've done in this service. These are all the button mappings that it would take to pull that off. Okay, this is every type of those particular families. All right, click OK. We'll go back to Revit. Reload that configuration. Do the same thing again. So my button mappings worked. Not bad, right? Um, what, what I really struggle with is the need to have the service completely littered with project-specific um, button codes. And that's a pretty high demand, I think, on your database admin or whoever's doing this for you um, to get this right, OK? Um, <clears throat> so. What I wanted to show you here, let's go back. There is a ability to have a single type, okay? Victolic in particular is really good about this. They use what's called a lookup table. So a lookup table is kind of like a CSV file and it's gonna look at that file to, to get all the parameter sizes correct, okay? Um, if you look here, when I click on the type selector, it says standard. There's no, if you look up here at these other ones, there's all these different sizes. It says standard, okay? So that kind of gives me an idea. Well, you know, we can have one button code uh, to do this. Uh, makes things simplified at least a little bit there, okay? Um, and then the, what, what I struggled with was, well, if I build a valve, um, you know, knowing my audience, the drafters are going to struggle with, if I build a valve with a standard um, type and it has a lever action, okay, well, the project needs a wheel. Um, and that's really going to kind of mess with the end users. They, they, you guys actually build this stuff, so it kind of matters to you. Um, so I wanted to use kind of the design line concept, okay, 
when you draw in CAD, all right, put in a valve here. Oops. All right, you put in a, a node, right? Um, doesn't actually have a wheel, doesn't have a lever, um, but what it does have is it has some information that when it goes to fill this node, <coughs> um, it's going to come over here and it's going to find this button code here. It's going to hit, hey, there's an 8 inch. Let's throw that in there. Okay? So what I want to do is I want to take that and apply it to Revit that concept. So what I've built is some families that are essentially just nodes. Okay? I'll scroll up here. We'll pick on this check valve. So when I place a check valve, it's not cutting in. There we go. So it's just a box, right? Kind of has that node concept. There's no um, graphical representation. Uh, if I go look at it from a 3D view, okay, um, it's just, it, it's literally a space holder. It's not something you're going to want in your model for an actual project. This is just for mapping, okay? Um, Revit's ability to swap items out is really a powerful feature, okay? Swapping um, similar items. Um, so I can take this globe valve that's existing in my project that has some ridiculous name to it, um, and I don't really care about the size. Uh, so I'm going to go down and I'm going to assign this to the globe valve uh, node, okay? So it just swapped it out. It doesn't care about the size, so um, in the AutoCAD workflow, you could put a ball valve on a 8-inch run, okay? It's not going to put a ball valve on an 8-inch system because you're probably having that restricted to 2 inches and below, uh, but you could put it on there. Uh, the same thing is going to be true here, all right? So in this family, It's going to look a little bit complicated, but it's not. Um, it's just a 2D lines, okay? Um, I've got a little tiny extrusion here to simulate some pipe for, for a connector, okay? I've got a pipe connector put on there. Um, and that's about it for that family, okay? Um, and it's literally the same family over and over. So for my ball valves, butterfly valves, globe valves, check valves. Um, the only thing I'm doing different between all those is has a different name, okay? And the type of that family, I named it Design to Fab. So I don't have a size. I don't have a, you know, inch or anything like that. So the only, if you see in the model a you know, a node that says design to fab is kind of, I, I know what that's for, okay? Um, keeps things a little bit more uh, standardized. Um, I did not include this family in the um, downloads for the class, so if this is something that you want, send me an email. I'm happy to share it with you. But again, I wanted to keep a family simple, okay? Because most of you are kind of new to Revit. Building families is not a forte. Um, it's not my forte either. So simplicity, I'm all about keeping it simple. Um, the, uh, I, think Re I think Revit families, frankly, are harder to build than ITMs, than, our, than, than fabrication parts. They're very broad. You can do almost anything you want, okay? So I'm going to close this. So from the end user perspective, okay, I'm going to use the uh, select all instances, okay? You can do it whether you're, you want to 
swap them out in the entire project or you want to swap them out uh, one by one. I'm going to select entire project here. Um, I would caution carefully against that. Um, if you convert things that you can't see in your modeling space, um, sometimes things might disappear. Um, you don't know which diffuser, what part of the duct that diffuser is supposed to be connected to because something didn't convert correctly. So be real methodical about converting your models into fab parts. Um, so you'll see how that all instances picked on these two highlighted here. I don't know if can you guys see that all right. Um, so I can change this to a ball valve. Okay. Kind of, again, going with the whole design line concept where you can see what that is supposed to be uh, from inside the view. Since a square is not very descriptive, uh, put some annotation in there to show up. And when you say, when you, when, when you uh, use this select all instances, um, it's going to select also the, the family name and the sizes. So um, let's say the, they put a ball valve on a four inch run, okay? You want to change that to be a butterfly valve, okay? You could have an opportunity to select all the four inch ball valves and put a butterfly valve there instead, okay? No, an engineer wouldn't do that. I absolutely would. <laughs> so these are different butterfly valves, right? Um, this, these are the same family, they're just different sizes. You can build um, a schedule to report this information, okay, so you have a better idea of what all is in your project if you have things that are the wrong size. Um, so now what I've done is I've replaced valves with my node, okay. My node is open. It's going to go on any size, all right. Um, so now what I have is I have a standard family name. I have a standard type. All right, so that really can reduce the burden on the database admin to have to get in and change these button codes on every single project. All right, so that's kind of my goal is to put the, the onus on the drafter that his job is to pay attention to what he's converting um, to what fabrication part. All right, the admin's job is to standardize this process so you can train your staff on how to use this um, and it reduces the amount of adjusting that you have to do in the button mapping. Okay, So I'm going to jump back here and I'm going to delete all this baloney. Forty-three entries down to these. Okay, So all our Ball valves, butterfly valves, check valves, gate valves, strainers, globe valves, okay. Um, strainers, speaking of strainers, strainers have a different um, type. Let me show you real quick. from inside the family. Uh, strainers would have this, um, a lot of them are gonna have breaks into. There's two different options here. There's breaks into um, and valve breaks into. Can you guys see that? Um, a lot of strainers have this breaks into. Most valves are using this valve breaks into, okay? Um, so there might be a need to have two nodes, depending on where that strainer, how the strainer was built, 
um, the strainer family was built, if it was built using the valve brakes in or if it's built using the brakes in, okay? Because that, that matters in Revit. All right, so we've got, I can put these, this list of Revit mappings in every relevant service in my database, okay? I don't, um, anytime I build a server, do you guys use profiles? We really like to push profiles. Um, we, you, by default, build out mechanical system, put these button mappings in there and you don't have to really mess with them. Um, as long as the families are available to your end user, they can load those families, start swapping out families, uh, and when they convert, database is up and ready to go. So I'm gonna click OK. Jump back here, we'll reload. Click OK. You know, ideally we would have a mapping interface for this kind of stuff, but um, this is kind of what we have to work with. All right, so I converted all those valves um, with only five button mappings. That's about it. Short and sweet. Questions on the concept, ideas? Um, no comments. Yeah. Right. It's <laughs> how's it adjusting? Because I didn't put any restrictions on it. So it'll go to any size I put it on. It, w it won't go to rectangular. So the same concept is for ductwork. Ductwork has, it's rectangular, it has a different connector. So we would need a different node for that. But um, for your fire dampers and right, right. And you know, <laughs> you may end up using families for things like that, for inline ductwork. Because there's a lot of um, fire dampers that are pretty well detailed out. Um, but if you have uh, fabrication dampers, you can definitely use the same process on those. Sorry I used the pipe examples here. I don't want to leave the duck guys out of this. But um, the same process applies. Yes? So that connector, you know, when you replace it, that, that gap that is currently being taken up by whatever the engineer gave you is going to get replaced by this one. It's not going to, it's still going to be right on that bend, if, if, if that's what you're asking. It's not going to take it's up It's going to depend on how good the model is. It, how realistic are the, por the generic rev families the engineer drew with? Um, and my guess is, no. Nah. You're going to have to move it. The only um. issue that I've had re um, regarding this is that the butterfly valve um, is not as wide. And my node, is, I think my node I created for the butterfly valve was a little bit too wide. So uh, the request was to you know, shrink that in a little bit to n not take up too much real estate um, in the model, taking up more than necessary. Any other questions? Is it the actual size? No, it's just the node. So I have no idea how tall the handle is going to be, how big the diameter is going to be. Yeah. No, I'm not matching um, the linear size of what was there because that's probably wrong. Um, what's right is my fabrication part. So I don't know what that's going to be a forehand. Follow what I'm saying? Yep. Is there any specific reason why you choose the node instead of having some geometry attached to it? So that why the, the geometry? Yeah. Right, again, and I wanted to stay away from geometry because it will confuse the end user. Um, again, it's supposed to be a, a 
a, a handle lever, and, and this is a wheel. Um, it's quite obvious what it is when it's just that. If it looked like a valve, they would that's think it was a valve. When it's really not, we're just using it to, to do a translation. It's a mapping, right? And that's why I put the annotation in there. So when you see that annotation, you'll know. Uh, graphically, that's just a square, but the purpose of this is that there's going to be a ball, ball valve there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, it's not something that you would use this to design with. Um, it's only purposes to convert to fabrication and make it more fluid, um, keep the database manager from having to edit it per project, uh, standardizes it for your end users so they don't have to constantly be coming to the admin saying, I need you to add these button codes. Um, and really, hopefully, hopefully it's, it's a temporary thing and, and we get a, a better, more permanent solution later from Autodesk. But if you have to be in Revit now and you're in there working in it now, this is, I guess, a bit of a workaround, uh, but much smoother than if you do letter of the law of how they've set it up right now. Yeah. If you're doing design build and you're doing this stuff in house, I mean that gives you a huge leg up in how to how to build a model that uh, converts better uh, to fabrication right. parts. But when you're yeah when you're pulling Revit models from this engineer and that engineer and they they do things completely different um, than than another one. A lot of their stuff is not even that useful. If you if you got in house, it's no problem having that many button codes in there. Have yeah. them mapped all to what your in-house engineers are doing so that th that conversion process is seamless and you don't even have to swap them out for these nodes. Just run the convert. Right. Um, yes, sir. Right. So in every view, um, it's just a node. Even in a 3D view. The only thing that doesn't it, show up in it a didn't 3D move. view. It didn't move. Your screen didn't move. What is going on? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Twilight zone here. Um, in a 3D view, you don't get the annotation. Revit does 3D annotation differently. Um, but you can still see the nodes. No graphical information. Oh, and this tool here is really cool. I, they added this in, I think, in 17, this selection box. So it's kind of a only show you what you've selected. Any other questions? I know it's, I covered this really fast. Um, I'm more than, like I said, I'm more than willing to share the families. They're not complicated. That's kind of my objective is to make this not complicated. Um, the family is, again, it's just 2D geometry with a little tiny pipe extrusion on both sides with a connector on it. And I put some parameters in there to let it, you know, flex and adjust depending on the size so my node isn't super tiny on a 12-inch run. Um, but it's also not overly big on a 1-inch run. So it needs to adjust somewhat dynamically with what I'm attaching it to. Yes, sir? Yeah, then did you create a schedule? Did, you show did I create a schedule? No, I'm more, I can create a schedule. Yeah. My other class is on schedules. <laughs> if you want to learn about schedules, you got to come to my other class. <laughs> I'm sorry? Yeah. All right, so schedules. Um, everything in Revit is based on a, uh, a category. Okay, pipes uh, inline uh, falls under the category of pipe accessories. Duct inline falls under the category of duct accessories. So we can't have one schedule for both. We can have a schedule for pipe and a schedule for duct. Where would you want to schedule out these nodes? Okay.
the, 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 the struggle go. I have with that is that depending on the family, it doesn't always stay connected. Um, Revit, you can swap things out. I've somehow it's converting, it's swapping things out differently in, in through this workflow. So what he's saying is this ball valve could have said, um, or this butterfly valve. You know what, let me back up a little bit farther so I can do this. All right, so I'm putting all my valves back in. Uh, where's my schedule? Did I close it? Well, I don't know where I put my schedule. I can do one. Oh, I undid it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Didn't think of that one. <laughs> you thought the undo was put valves back. I'm sorry? Yeah. Sorting by family here. Is it a different project? So what happens when you try to do things on the fly? It's all your fault. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, sir. All right, so what he's saying is what you could do is come in here and say, all right, so this is a ball valve, two inch. Actually, you know what? I can merge these instead of itemizing every instance. This, is, this interface is about as frustrating as the reports one in CAD. Um, so I could uh, swap them out here. This is a ball valve, two inch. I would just come down here and put ball valve design to fab. Okay. So this is another method of the type selector um, in Revit. The issue, like I said, is that sometimes the, um, the swap out will disconnect the pipe from the, from the valve, um, in which case you don't get the extra flange or whatever um, would connect the two. But there's definitely plausibility here. So maybe you start here and test it out, and if things go horribly wrong, back up and then do it the other way. Having method. a default um, schedule <clears throat> in your project for stuff like this, um, there's room for that. And let's see if that worked. Yeah, see, it didn't work for me. It, it became disconnected. So it, it's a different swap out method than the type selector. Right, right. Yes, and that's a good point. Let's close that. Did I just close the wrong project? All right, so what he's saying is you can pick on that and then select this highlight in model tool. 
And you'll see how they're highlighted. And then I can use the type selector. Multiple ways of skinning the same cat. Like like because of what I was selecting in that schedule, that's what it selected in the model. Oh, you want to split the screens? Between the two. So as you pick through. As you pick one of those, if you just click on the head at the top header, right. you, you're already in that view after you've looked at it. Good point. I don't, I, I just struggle with recommending um, picking this drop down this way just because yeah. of the results. Type select. Yeah. 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 Good. All right, I think we can wrap this class up. I don't want to take up any more of your time than necessary. Yes, sir. It doesn't. It doesn't care. No, it's just kind of connector. I don't even know if it has a connector one and a two. I mean, sometimes the annotation will be upside down or rotated around. So that's something we have to go back after this design line and make sure it's properly shown as well as we get the takeout. When you go into fabrication, it's different on both sides of that valve. It's going to put, uh, when you drop in a, a connector or a fabrication valve, it's going to put connector one on the upside of that flow, I guess, if that's what you're saying. So no matter the orientation of that node, the valve, the fabrication valve is going to come in kind of the, other, the, the way it's supposed to. I think you got a 50-50 shot of getting it right. Yeah, it depends on the direction. <laughs> you draw. I'm sorry? It depends on the direction you draw. The direction. One is always You draw from left to right or right to left. And that's always going to be the direction. Yeah. Any other questions? We can wrap it up. We're good. All right. You're dismissed. <laughs>